Bonjour, my name is David DeVere. I'm a wine educator and traveler, and you're watching Savvy Nomad TV, the Eau de Vie edition. Today, we're tasting cheap Sauvignon Blanc. Well, one cheap, one medium cheap. $6.99 Costco branded Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand versus $11.99 non-Costco branded Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc from, you guessed it, New Zealand. Do they taste different? Is the $4 a noticeable improvement on the wine? How does the $6 wine taste? $6 wine is pretty cheap. All right, let's crack into these and see what they taste like. So this episode really wasn't even supposed to exist. It happened because I had an idea when I was at the store to compare a $6.99 wine to a wine that's twice the cost of that. So I found this Kirkland branded Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc for $6.99, let's call it seven. And then there's this McBride for $11.99, let's call it 12. So it's not double the price, but it's pretty darn close. And I wanted to see if this wine tastes the same, worse, or better than the wine that costs more money. And we're really down in the slim margin region here, but this is where Costco lives. It makes its money on very slim margins and a volume. So the way that it works for all these Kirkland branded products, they go to a manufacturer. They say, hey, we really like this. We want you to sell this direct to us. We want to put our very simple label on, and then we'll sell it directly in our stores. We'll cut out the middleman. Essentially, it's cost plus 10% is the retail price that you see at the store. I think. I could be totally wrong. You're just watching some weird dude on the internet, so don't take my word for it, but I think it's cost plus 10%. If this is $7, that means Costco spent $6.30 to sell it to me in my store in northern Minnesota. Now the McBride people, I'm gonna put this in the ice bucket so it's ready for us when we want to drink it. The McBride people have all this other stuff they've gotta go through. They've gotta package it, they've gotta come up with their own label, they've gotta find wholesalers, distributors, they've gotta pay lots of intermediaries, and then they have to sell it to Costco, who then is going to sell it at cost plus so if this is $12, that means take 10% off, that's a buck 20. That means Costco paid uh, $10.80 to sell this to me. Okay, so it is almost double. That's the idea. Can two wines from the same region that taste of the same grape, do they taste better or not? Okay, let's find out. You know, and the, the, the core concept here really is, since the McBride people have to spend so much extra money marketing and selling and wholesaling, all that kind of stuff, it might actually be the same wine. It might actually taste better, which is why Costco can sell this stuff for a lot cheaper. Okay, Sauvignon Blanc. Before we open this, here's my tasting card. If you don't know how to use this or you've never used it, I've made a video, fly out or link in the description. Uh, the tasting card essentially just breaks apart the components of the wine, it allows us to give a score. Sauvignon Blancs, especially from New Zealand, are pretty much all screw caps nowadays, which makes them easy to open. And the screw cap preserves the freshness of the wine, so that's nothing to be concerned about. Also notice here, both bottles have a Burgundian low shoulder instead of the high tall shoulder, so we can infer that the Kiwis are making this more in a French style rather than a California style. All right, aroma, let's see what we get. Limes, lemons, it's fruity, it's not particularly herbaceous. It smells nice, but it's not overwhelming in aroma. Uh, 
the color is mm, yellow green. It is pale. And I will give the aroma a six. It's nice, but nothing too exciting. Okay, let's taste it. Mmm. Ooh, that tastes nice. It's dry. It's light bodied. It's got a crisp acidity. It's not that big watery mouthfeel. When I say watery, I mean I'm not salivating a lot. I am slightly, that's the acidity. I can feel that building now. That's quite nice. It's very lime forward in the mouth. Okay, for acidity, I'm going to give it a 7. No, I'll give it an 8. Balance, it doesn't burn. It's not shutting off my throat. It's nice and acidic. I don't notice the alcohol. It's good. I'll give it an 8. Complexity. Straight off the bat, I got a lot of extra lime. I'm going to taste it again. Complexity is the aromas you get once you swallow the wine or once you have it in your mouth. It's nice. It's good. There is some flavors. I'll give it a six. And the finish... It's medium long. There's no faults in the finish. It's not particularly unctuous, meaning it doesn't go and go and go, but I still have the flavor. I'll give it a seven. All right. There's our $6.99 example. Now let's chill down the McBride sisters <laughs> and see how they taste. Okay, so the McBride Sauvignon Blanc is from 2020, and the uh, Kirkland is from 2021. Generally, you want to buy the youngest Sauvignon Blanc you can. Don't buy an old one. No, it's not like a broken record now, but it's true. And um, that's really the only reason they have the date on there for Sauvignon Blanc. Just so you know, hey, uh, this is a little long in the tooth. I'm not going to want to drink it. Or, yay, it's brand new. Let's drink it. Okay, so color. These, these two almost look exactly the same in color. So greenish yellow and pale. All right. Let's see what 12 bucks gets us. It smells less citrusy, more stone fruit, like peaches or nectarines. A little sweeter, a little maybe like toasted bread or baked bread. It's, it's definitely a different aroma. It's still slight. I'm going to say peach, and I'm going to give it... Yeah... I'll give it a six because I noticed the aromatics, but they're not pow out of the glass. Okay, let's taste it. Mm. It's dry, but the body is bigger. A noticeably bigger body. The acidity is fresh. It's not that big, bright grip of uh, acids from the first Sauvignon Blanc. It's a little disappointing, actually, in the acidity. The, the wine uh, feels a little weak. So um, I'm going to give it a five. The balance doesn't burn. The acidity is good. I don't notice the alcohol. The balance is good. I will give it a seven. Now I'm going to go for complexity again.
I don't really get any additional aromas here or flavors. The wine actually feels flat. So, complexity. It is disappointing. Four. The finish is medium. I can feel the acids, the grippiness on my, in my mouth, but the wine is a little bland. I'll give it a four. All right, I'm going to go do my math. Okay, here are my final scores for our two Marlboro Sauvignon Blancs. The Kirkland 699 scored 85 points, and the McBride scored 76 points. That is a big difference. And if uh, even without scoring them, you could do a blind taste test and you could tell that this one is more aromatic, fruitier, more flavorful, nicer level of acidity than the more expensive $12 wine. So $7, Kirkland wins out. If you're looking for an everyday drinker, I would recommend this. This is a nice wine. It's not going to knock your socks off. It's not going to make a presentation. Last week's wines, the Kirkland Sancerre, the Craggy Range, those were very nice wines. If you've got people coming over for dinner and you want to serve a nice Sauvignon Blanc, those are the recommendations. They're in the 90-point range. This is in the 80s, and this is in the 70s. A disappointment here. Nothing to write home about. This, you could buy half a case, keep it around for the summertime, and you would not be disappointed in the results. Okay, well, what did that teach us? It taught us that... I'm not actually sure what it taught us. It taught us that the Kirkland branded stuff at their price point is actually pretty good compared to wines that are twice as much, and maybe it's the economics involved in there. Maybe when you look at a Kirkland branded wine, you can double the price and that's the type of wine that you'll be getting. So this would really come out to be a $14 wine versus a $12 wine. Last week, the Sancerre was $15. Yeah, may, it might have tasted as much as a $30 non-branded Kirkland Sancerre. That might be a good ratio. I don't know. Let's do more testing. There are more episodes to come. And if you enjoyed this one, please give me a thumbs up. If you are new here, please consider subscribing. I'm going to go get Sarah. I'm not going to, I'm going to hide the bottles. I'm not going to tell her which is which. Let's see what she perceives and if she likes these wines. And until next week, where we're moving on to Reds and Merlot, I say a tout there and cheers. Hello. Okay, Kirkland. Well, these are both pretty, pretty clear. <laughs> Kirkland. Aromatic. Whatever this one is, McBride Sisters. That doesn't have much smell. Um, less aromatic and maybe a hint of, I don't want to say rubber, but I kind of want to say rubber. I'll try the Kirkland first. Zingy. Hmm. Uh, I think we tried Kirkland the other day. This is less acidic maybe, or a little bit lighter or something. It's pretty drinkable. Yeah, I don't really like the way this one smells. That's too bad. Well, it goes down fine. <laughs> um, also fairly zingy and, um, you know, bright in the mouth. A little bit less acidic or maybe a little bit more watery. I think they'd be okay for everyday drinkers.
Cheers. Wait. Ah. Which one do you like better? Probably the Kirkland. Okay. Thanks. Okay.